Well, hello there, and welcome to episode number 15 of the Curve the Cube podcast, which is your South Florida-based arts, entertainment, and media podcast looking to inspire you to pursue your passions and, and go for your dreams and, you know, live outside of Cuba. Um, on this episode, we feature Tracy St. George, who is a radio host personality and seriously one of the, the funniest, sweetest, and just most awesome gals out there. She's really, really cool. You can really love this podcast. She came in full of life and fun and energy, and um, we ended up talking about all kinds of stuff from how she grew up in Wisconsin and then landing on Florida radio and, um, and, you know, what she thinks about being in radio and why she loves it so much, and we talk about her favorite music, and some, we get into some celebrity gossip type stuff, and um, it's, it's a really fun podcast. And in fact, at one point, um, we even talk about uh, how you both were featured in the same movie. And um, so we'll let that, just stay tuned for that to the fun fact reveal. Uh, anyways, so enjoy this podcast. Um, and you can catch Tracy on 107.9. She does um, the 80s and 8s. But before that, she's actually on from 2 to 7 on WRMF. So, um Let's recap. WRMF from 2 to 7 and on Sunny 107.9 um, for 80s at 8. And this is Tracy St. George with Curve the Cube, episode number 15. Enjoy! Curve the Cube will now initiate. You're such a fashionista. I try. <laughs> Sometimes I come in here looking like, well... <laughs> okay, so you can have this one. Okay. What are we all going to talk about? Just stuff like your career and okay. why you're doing what you're doing and all more about okay. Tracy. That'll be super fun. <laughs> I know all about that. Topic. You do? That's awesome. <laughs> I found the right person to talk it. about you. <laughs> I love it. This will be so fun. <laughs> Super fun. All right, all right. Okay, so that is there. Okay. New thing blow. <sighs> hello, hello, hello. Do we have headphones on then? Nope, don't even need headphones. Hello, hello, hello. This is it. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's no one else to listen to. <laughs> no! This is it. It's just us. Is it going? Yep, it's going. So whenever you are ready, awesome. we can start. This is very, very cool. Okay. So, yeah, how did you get started in radio? What was your first job, and how did you get into this whole thing? Well, um, first of all, I went to college for fashion merchandising okay. in Wisconsin because I thought, I'm going to be the biggest fashion designer of all time because <laughs> I love fashion and stuff. Yeah. So I went to college for that, and one of my classes, I was burning fabric. And I was like, to see how it burns. Really? Like, polyester melts, seersucker does this. You're so th- funny. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I don't like this. So <laughs> I called my favorite radio DJ yeah. at WLUM in Milwaukee. And I said, how did you become a DJ? <laughs> and she said, well, I went to this school in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, I'm going to go there too. So the next day I called up to the school. Um, I got to do an audition. I got in the school, wow. and then that's how it became. So it literally me. just turned on a dime for you. Yes, mm-hmm. that's amazing, and I love it. It's so much fun. Oh wow! And I've been doing it forever. Don't ask how long. Oh, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> that's girl code. Yeah, I exactly. Never break girl code. <laughs> so how long? I've been just kidding. <laughs> I'll so, tell you my shoe size. I'll tell you whatever you want. Any know, other number? How long? Any other number? <laughs> Well, almost any other number. I mean, there are a couple others, Mike. <laughs> That's true. Up. I could embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you were you born in, in Wisconsin? Wisconsin, you... yes. Wow. And I keep moving a little bit more south all the time. Well, you only have a little bit left to go. I mean, are you going to end know. up in the Keys? I might be in Brazil someday. Brazil? Because <laughs> I, I started my uh, career in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Oh, wow. And I did overnight, so I was on from midnight till six in the morning. Wow. And I did that for a year, and on my year anniversary, I said, peace out. Right. I can't do this anymore. I love my job, but I just can't do this anymore. So then I moved back home and I worked at this awesome Mexican restaurant mm-hmm. and my mom said, um, you paid for school. I think you need to go back and do this because you're really good at it. And I said, okay, cool. Thanks, mom. Oh, that's nice. So um, I went back and I worked in Wausau, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. 
I did overnights there, but it was different. And then I also, at the same time, worked weekends in Madison wow. at Z104. So I was doing eight shows a week. Wow. I would do six shows overnights, and then I would drive to Madison to do my two weekend shows, and I would drive back and forth from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Oh so gosh. back and forth to Madison and then back and forth to Wausau. But I love what I do, so yeah. I did it. It gives you that energy. Exactly. Well, I'm thinking, like, so you worked overnights. Does that, did that include, like, the Friday overnight and then you worked on the weekend the next... You know, okay, like, did you just see, get no I rest? I, no rest, <laughs> ever. I slept all the time. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, it was, like, midnight till 6, and I think it was Monday night, Tuesday night. It must have been th to Thursday night. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! And do you come from a big family? Do you have brothers and sisters? Uh, just one brother, uh -huh. Jason, and he is younger than me. And he's yeah. got two kids, and he's awesome. His kids are awesome. I love my sister-in-law. Oh, so it's great. That's good. And yeah. you have a boy, uh huh, Hunter, oh. who is fifteen. Oh my gosh! Freshman, plays lacrosse. He's so good. That's so cool. Yeah, he's the best boy. That's awesome. Do you see any of the traits that you have and that you bring into your profession? Do you see any of that in your son? Yes, because yeah. he's actually in the magnet program for television, film and radio broadcasting I'm okay. and ever since he was little he's always come to the radio stations with me wherever I've worked mm -hmm. and he loves going on the editing machines and stuff like that he loves doing that stuff awesome um so he's always wanted to do that kind of stuff in production and producing and stuff like that and that's what he's doing at school yeah but mostly now he's in the television part so they're editing videos and stuff and he absolutely loves it and I'm so proud oh that's yeah. awesome it's cool mm -hmm. the apple doesn't fall far I from know the tree. right <laughs> that's really cool did you have a mentor for yourself as you were kind of coming up who did you look yes. to and... um, Danny Clayton mm -hmm. was my program director at my third third or fourth radio station, WKTI in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. at, which is now no longer, now it's called The Lake. And um, he's still there, and he's the program director and does the morning show. Oh. And he always called me the diamond in the rough. He's oh. like, you just got to keep working at it, keep doing it. And he's just such a wonderful man who really, whenever I think, what would Danny do? What would yeah. Danny do? And that's, uh, seriously, in all my years of my career, I always think, what would Danny Clayton do? Oh, my gosh. And are you guys still able to keep in touch? And... Yes, we yeah. are. And I got to see him last summer. He was broadcasting live from the Wisconsin State Fair, so I went and saw him, and it was so nice to oh, see him. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Is it cool to now have be in a position where you've had success and you're really doing really well for yourself and what you're doing? Is it cool to now see other kids coming up yes. the way that you were and yes, be able to see how, how to develop them and help them out and stuff? It what really is very like? fun yeah. to do that. But the thing that I worry about is there's so much um, syndication, mm -hmm. like with that darn Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, I know. It makes me mad that he's like everywhere and... Ryan actually worked at Star 94 in Atlanta, where uh -huh. I worked, but he was there before I was. He, okay. he had left to go to California before I got there. But it's like he started out very small. He was an intern dude, I think, and mm -hmm. promotions, and then he you know, got on the air there. But it's like, Ryan, if you're listening, um, <laughs> you started out as a small person who wanted to have this radio career, yeah. and you learn and you grow. And I just think I myself right now, but I don't know what I would say in the future. Yeah. I don't think I would want to do a syndicated show to be everywhere, everywhere because you're taking away time slots from people that are up and coming and mm -hmm. want to be in the radio as well. And I think local is definitely where it's at anyway. Right, right. But I mean, if you have too much syndication, then you're not going to ever have anybody right. new coming up and learning and the growing. The connection becomes diluted because you're, you're, you're like, you know, I'm thinking of Elvis Duran, for example, in New York, Do love who Elvis. I love him. Yes. You know, but, um, and he doesn't talk too much about what's going on specifically in mm -hmm. New York the way that, you know, um, you guys do locally about here because you're local. My but, favorite morning show, though, is KBJ. I oh, don't know if you've heard of them. Oh, um, <laughs> they sound a little bit familiar. I, I don't know. I think I've heard about them somewhere. They're my know, favorite but, morning oh, show. Oh, I don't know why that is. <laughs> They're terrible. <laughs> Best morning show ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I noticed that, like, you know, with him, with Elvis, for example, if they become, they're syndicated so widely that mm -hmm. there isn't that connection to those specific local audiences. And so I get, I get what you're saying. And yeah. So, you know, someone can, you know, I'm thinking of the, like, the interns here, or, you know, they can see that local talent have opportunities to work with local talent because exactly. you guys are here. And Elvis Duran is not going to go on appearances in West Palm Beach right. when K, V, and J, they all will. <laughs> right, right. So you can 
always and you meet. Do. And me, know. yes. <laughs> and Dave Brewster, we all do. Yeah. And we love to meet the people and stuff like that. And with Elvis, it's kind of hard. He'll, he'll come down here like once a year or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like some fest, I think they yeah. were down here last year or something mm. like that. But yeah, it's But us guys, totally we're different. everywhere. We're at Publix. We're at Walgreens. We're everywhere. Car dealerships. Yeah. I mean, you name it. <laughs> I hear the radio. I'm like, oh, Beth is going to be there. Oh, Tracy's going to be there. Oh, okay. We're everywhere. everywhere. And we love it. We love our community. So how did you end up in this community? Um, well, I was in Atlanta. The station I was at before was um, Star 84 and Q100 in Atlanta, mm-hmm. which I loved. And I was there for 11 years. And with radio, you can just kind of, you know, oh, I like this area. I like this area. And you can go there if there's a radio job. Right. So I said to myself, I think I want to live in Florida because my granny has um, or had a condo in Naples. So uh-huh. I've always been coming down to Florida my whole entire life. And I just love oh, Florida. Yeah, yeah. So I sent my audition tape to um, every single radio Did station you? on the East Coast and West Coast of Florida. Wow. WRMF was the first people to say, hey, we like you. Come work here. Oh, so yeah. I said, okay. And that's how I came to WRMF. And I just absolutely love it. That is amazing. And you're also doing some work for Sunny now, too. You're, yes. you're, on, you're on both stations. What's that schedule like? What's your daily schedule? Um, well, I do the 80s at 8 on Sunny. So mm-hmm. I come in um, probably like noonish, mm-hmm. and I'll do some production work with Dave Brewster, who's the um, afternoon guy at WRMF, mm-hmm. and the production guy. Mm-hmm. So I'll do production with him. Um, I'll do PSA interviews for our South Florida Sunday show that airs on all the stations on Sunday mornings. Um, so I get here around then. Uh-huh. Um, I do my show prep in the morning after. I drop my son up at school. Okay. Then I'll do my show prep there. So then when I come to work, I'll look at my music log and I'll kind of figure out, okay, I want to talk about this here, this here, this here. Uh Uh-huh. And then I do my show live until 7. And then I've got my little break. And then I do the <laughs> 80s at 8 on Sunny. Oh, and yeah, how the late 80s that is go so to? fun. 8 till 9. Okay. And yeah. I, seriously, that's my favorite musical decade uh, right i mean my my favorite oh. song of all time is take on me by aha oh it's the best love video too that, uh, <laughs> and a video well ahead of its time right love that mm. and then my favorite 80s band is Tears for Fears. I can listen to their music. They only had all like day. two songs. Where did they go? I they're know, so great, they're but where so did they go? Good. So they were good. so cute. Who, who do you love from that era? Michael Jackson. Obviously, Madonna. I was going to say it. She's my all time. Oh, she's the greatest person in the world. Um, she's another one. What would Madonna do? Yeah. Sometimes I don't listen when what would Madonna do and I won't do it. But <laughs> Sometimes um, it becomes what would Madonna not do. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I've seen her on tour a million times. Oh, wow. Um, I was lucky lucky enough to be in the front row Ooh. twice Ooh. and um, both times she sang like a line of the song to me they, like with a oh point I'm like so cool. oh my god she spoke to me she I was blessed <laughs> so that yeah, was amazing I saw you get like upset when uh, I think it was on Twitter when uh KBJ was making fun of the <gasps> new I song. Did. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Madonna's stuff, it, it was very different. I mean, there's no getting around. That song was different. I can't even remember what it was called because I can't either. it was bizarro. But I was like, you know, that's Madonna. She's always different. Yeah. She's just the coolest person ever. I just love her. I can't yeah. get enough. Yeah, she's she's really a Renaissance lady. And she's just 56 for amazing. crying out loud. She's she amazing. Looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what is, um, I know you've gotten to do some other things, like how has your career evolved over time? I know you do um, Trending with Tracy yeah. and CBS and stuff. What are some of the cool things you, you've gotten to do over the course uh, Well, of Trending career? with Tracy is super fun. I yeah. love doing that. And it's just like a little one-minute segment with um, Eric and Suzanne on CBS 12, and I get mm-hmm. to talk about what's the hottest story of then. Um, I actually got to work with Anderson Cooper oh, neat. when I was in Atlanta because CNN is right there. So oh, I would cool. also do a little um, minute five minute thing with um, Anderson and Carol Costello no it was her show and whenever Aunt, uh, Carol was gone Anderson would fill in yeah 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 and that was really super fun oh that sounds yeah. super fun what's he like in person super cute and really <laughs> nice exactly like you see him on TV just that cute smart but adorable and it's got that cute little smile and he's a silver fox man yeah he is definitely the silver he's fox a, he seems like the, like one, just the biggest sweetheart yes. and his whole family history and everything is just fascinating so very very interesting, Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that you've also done, well, we should tell the audience that you and I have actually appeared in a film together. Yes, we <laughs> did. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten an Emmy or, I mean, a, or anything. A tone. Maybe it's going to be brought to Broadway. Maybe. Maybe it that's, that'll be. be its big debut. Yeah. Clowns have murderous ways. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> now, we didn't get to shoot together because no. I couldn't be on set the, the, the day that you were on set. When and I was then, murdered. Yeah, when you were murdered. And then I was murdered <laughs> a different day. But that was 
was fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, Jason from the KVJ Show has his um, production company. It puts together mm-hmm. these amazing videos, and we got to do it. It was so fun. Oh, my gosh. What other cool things have like that do you get to do? I think I saw like some videos, almost look like a video blog maybe, for like you did a fashion thing with Apricot Lane. Where you yes. Show off your clothes and um, stuff. Like, uh, what was it called? It was We did that a couple years ago, Fabulous Finds or something like that oh. with Apricot Lane, where I'd get to go and try on all the clothes and say what That's was so cool neat. stuff that was coming. Um, Gabe, who is the um, video production guy here, mm-hmm. we always come up with silly ideas of stuff oh to do. Oh my gosh, no, I don't know if you've seen it, but the day I met Gabe mm-hmm. was uh, the day that Virginia had her crawfish boil in oh, Lake okay. Worth a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. Yes, at Betty's on the beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video. But I didn't. Jason, uh, Denny's, Gabe. Uh, myself and a bunch of other people all gathered in a bathroom and we sang the theme song to Cheers. Oh, I love it. And it's on YouTube. I'm going to look it it up. (laughs) Talk about some weird, random, (laughs) crazy things you get to do. Gabe is so talented. We have such a great time doing videos and stuff. Um, Last, it was the Christmas before last, um, I was on the morning show with Bill on Sunny and I was doing the morning show and the afternoon show and we did this um, takeoff on like a 50s or 60s television show where, you know, the guests would come on and Bill and I were the hosts. Uh-huh. And as the show went, it's like a five minute video, but as the show went on, I was getting drunker and drunker. <laughs> so as I was drinking wine and we were singing along, it was hilarious. But I think it got taken down because oh, we no. violated some copyrights or something. But oh, it was man. so funny. I gotta and see a B side of that. I, I know, I'll have to find it for you. But um, it was, you know, Gabe's little creation that he made it was hilarious oh that's awesome how so your schedule just sounds like i mean it's very non-traditional like Mm -hmm. you know that when you kind of get going in the morning and how has it been tricky figuring that out and getting that to go because the you know the quote-unquote rest of the world kind of there tends to be more of a nine to five Mm -hmm. with a lot of people's schedules and how does how did that figure out with your friends and your social life Uh, well it's not that bad because i mean i get done well at nine, but um, now we still hang out. I still yeah. come to Dirty Martini and hang yeah, you out, do. you know, and stuff like that. But it's never really been that much of a problem. And like when Hunter was younger, when I was in Atlanta, actually, I did ten to three there, mm-hmm. so it was perfect. I could drop Hunter off at school. Um, I would do my show, and then at the end of my show, I'd go pick him up. But now that he's older, he hangs out at um, school. Yeah, he's got after school stuff that he does he's got friends in the neighborhood so it really doesn't you know get in the way of hunter and i doing stuff because i'll go home and have dinner with him and then i'll you know run back here and do the 80s at 8 show gotcha but yeah okay okay that sounds nice Mm -hmm. then and so you mentioned earlier like part of your show prep is you look at your music log and you figure out what you're going to talk about here and that who i've always wondered who how does that how does how is it decided like what music gets played when and um, d- does the host actually make those decisions? Did it has that changed over time? Like how does that? If it was work? my decision, yeah. it would be Madonna <laughs> all day, every day. So I did not get to decide that, which is kind of smart. But um, our program director and our music director figure that out, and it's all done by magic. No, I have no oh idea God. actually how it works. I really don't know how it works, but we play um, all the hits. Um, we when you tune in to WRMF, you know you're going to hear a song that you know. Mm-hmm. We will still play new music, like the new Taylor Swift song just came out, Style. So mm-hmm. of course we're going to throw that on right away. Of course, yeah. But when you tune tune in to WRMF, you're going to already know the songs, and you're going to be able to sing along with them yes. already. We play the current, current hottest songs. Yeah, which is what I love so much about the station. Yeah. I just love to sing and dance mm-hmm. in my car. Exactly. I don't care who sees me. <laughs> So what have you learned over the, like, if you were basically to see, you know, the Tracy St. George who was going off to her first day of work at a radio station, Mm -hmm. and you were bumping into her on the street, what would you say to her? Change your hair. (laughs) (laughs) What is going on with that hairdo? (laughs) Um, What would I tell her? Um... I would say um, <laughs> stick with it. You're going to have some tough times coming because radio is a cruel, cruel business. Mm-hmm. Your friends get fired out of the middle of nowhere. Mm. Um, but just stick with it and, you know, really focus on what you're doing and you'll be awesome. Is it? Is there <laughs> a lot of pressure when it comes to the – what does that pressure feel like when it comes to the ratings and stuff like that? Because that, that really does dictate big. what you're yeah. – what your job security is, right? Is Definitely. That, yeah. yeah. You want to stay number one. And thankfully, I've been, you know, number one, number two Woo-hoo. for my whole entire career here. Uh, I know. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's very 
stressful. I mean, you never know. Yeah. You just never know what's yeah. going to happen. And uh, because, you know, so many people who are involved in this industry are become public figures, you know, just by the nature of, of what you guys do. Does that ever develop into dealing with egos that are difficult or is it usually yes the other way around where i cannot we're tell you really who has egos but yeah there's some people that just you're like oh get over yourself um, come on yeah. or people that think that they've been in the business so long and i deserve this you don't mm -hmm. just be happy that you are doing a job that you love mm -hmm. and that the company has enough um uh, what word am I trying to say? Just that they like you enough that they're keeping you because yeah. there's a million other people out there who love. We got CSB right down the street, you right. know. Right, right. So anybody <laughs> could come. Well, lots of fresh faces just exactly. waiting. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, what was the question again? Do, do they? Do they? Do people tend to be develop egos, or do they kind of tend to? Does it flip sometimes where because they're so out there, people end up becoming self conscious and um, afraid of, of of seeing who they are really out, outside themselves. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to give you an I don't know on yeah. that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do know there's some people that have egos, and it's just like, come on, man. <laughs> but I will tell you who does not have an ego, KVJ. Yeah. And honest, okay, before they came here, I always loved their show, and I mm -hmm. thought they were the coolest, nicest people, and I was so excited when they came. And I... I didn't think they would have an ego and anything like that, but I thought they're going to be very, you know, we are KBJ, we are la la la. They are the absolute <laughs> nicest people I have ever met in radio. They yeah. are the hardest working people. They are here until, I mean, I go on the air at two. Sometimes they're here later than that. Producer Denny's is usually here until, you know, four or five. They are the yeah. hardest working people in radio that I've ever met. And Honest to goodness, I'm not even making this up. They're the nicest people I've ever they met. They are phenomenal. They are. They, they really are. Phenomenal. Are. Has it? So you you knew them well before? No, I didn't know them at all. all. Okay, I did not know them at all. Yeah. I just heard them on the radio and thought their show was really funny. But I didn't know them at all. <laughs> How, is, how have they shaken up the building? <laughs> um, they brought a whole new life here. I'm telling you, it's just exciting all the time. It's mm -hmm. just, I mean, Jason comes in in pajamas every day. I know. And I love that. I know. But it's such a different, I mean, they really shook it up in a great way. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. it. So what is it that you love so much about radio? What did you fall in love with? Um, I love music in the first place. Yeah. You know, it's just so much fun. Who doesn't love music? Yeah. And I actually get to work in it and play it. I mean, that's my job. When when Hunter was little, um, one of his assignments at school was, what does your mother do? <laughs> she plays songs and gives away money. You know, so I was like, okay, well, that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell. We give away prizes. I mean, everybody <laughs> loves me. Yeah. You know, everybody loves Dave Brewster. Everybody loves KVJ because yeah. we are entertaining. We're playing music. We're having a good time. We're yeah. giving away prizes. When you tune in, we're not talking about the heavy bad stuff of the day you can get right. that on the news you right. know wherever but we're in just the fun business yeah but it's a serious business it's not all playtime i mean it's very serious but i mean it's it's awesome what do you think would surprise people the most who aren't in it if they found out what goes on something that's behind the scenes that they um, probably that we don't get to pick our own music because a lot of people do think that we yeah. get to play whatever we want to play. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I'll s tell my friends and I'm like, oops, sorry, just raised the curtain there. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I mean, there's not a lot. I mean, we're pretty true to what we do and mm -hmm. you know, what you hear in the air is what's going on and we're having a good time. Like the other day, I just posted a picture of um, intern Alex dancing in the studio to Bruno Mars. Oh, I, mean, I adore him. And that, he's, I, he's so great. Yeah. And that stuff really happens. I mean, I'll play a good song and I'll have it really loud and someone will come in and they'll just start dancing. And, you know, that's that's my work. Yeah. Dancing in the studio. Yeah. So it's just always fun. That's awesome. Have you always enjoyed talking to people, engaging people? And, yes, yeah. I do. Yeah, I'm a you, talker. And so is my very, son. Yeah. Yeah. We're talkers. Could you could you see yourself having done anything else in life? No, yeah. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine. Yeah. I don't even know what I would do after this. I don't know. Well, let's not think about that. No, let's not think about that. <laughs> I'll just join KVJ Nation and tour the world. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> oh, we're touring the world now? That's news to I me. I'm yeah, jumping definitely. on board. Let me get that cruise ship. Jeez. <laughs> and what is the coolest perk about being in radio and doing what you do? Like, what's just um, something that's just like, oh, that's awesome. I get to do that. Interviewing artists. Yeah. Going to concerts. Um, going backstage and hanging out with the artists. And, I mean, it's just that stuff. Movie premieres that we yeah. get to go to. Because we have to tell, you know, everybody about the concerts about mm -hmm. the movies oh, what so a we always get to kind what of them I know it's like oh I gotta do that again <laughs> but the person I so want to meet obviously is Madonna yeah, yeah I got to go backstage 
did her concert in Chicago. Oh. But I got well, I got to go um, in her dressing room. Oh my I got gosh. to go on the stage. I was actually on must the have been stage. Like in Oz. I would have been in awe. I felt, I felt like I just entered Oz. It was amazing. <laughs> but I did not get to see Madonna or meet her because <sighs> we got to be backstage right before the show. And um, before she went on, th- this big room that we were in, they closed the doors because you could not even watch her walk down the hallway. No way. No, could not watch her. But you she know, she didn't want to ruin that illusion at and, all. Right? And I, I think she's probably so in a zone that she doesn't want people to go. Hey, Madonna, because I probably would have said, "Oh, you would have lost your mind." I would have lost my mind. <laughs> so I'm sure she also and then found yourself attached to her ankle. Exactly. She's tracking you and down then the I would have been kicked out, and I want to get to see the show. But I mean, all that kind of stuff is just so awesome. I mean, what what an amazing thing I get to do every day. Yeah, I feel so lucky all the time. That is awesome. Yeah. What do you What do you have on the horizon that you're looking forward to? Any other big like any events or people that you're meeting or? Um, Sunfest is coming up. Yeah. Super excited for Sunfest. I can't wait to hear the lineup. Woo-hoo! Um. Uh, gee, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to keeping my job. And the thing I like about it too is it's different every day. There's mm-hmm. always new music. There's always new gossip. There's mm-hmm. always new entertainment. So that's what I think I like most about my job, and that's what I tell my son. You know, getting into this industry, even though it's ruthless and tough, Mm -hmm. it's always new. You're always doing something new, which I love. Rather than, not that, you know, having a banker's job is bad or something like that. Right, 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 right. Same numbers. Same numbers. Right. Same numbers. Right. But for us, it's different every single day, and I love that. You know what I think you would have done if you hadn't gone into radio? (gasps) Tell me. I think you would have been on, like, E! News or something like that. That would be awesome. I would would have loved to have been um, Tracy and Regis. (laughs) That would have been awesome. (laughs) But, yeah, I I just love that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though, for that. Absolutely. Well, I I love, because your Twitter feed is hilarious, first of all. I mean, you just, you you let it fly, and I love that. I've been in stitches sometimes, just like, oh my god, she she went there. (laughs) It's hilarious. So I noticed that you um, were live tweeting a lot about Celebrity Apprentice. (gasps) I'm obsessed. Do you watch that show? (laughs) I do. Oh my goodness. Okay, first of all, let's go back a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, Kenya Mm. supposedly stole Vivica's phone (laughs) and tweeted about Uh, her being in menopause or something like that. Um, I am not a huge fan of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I don't think she did it. You don't? No. Because first of all, um, if I would get your phone, could yeah. I get into it? No, you got a code on it. Yeah. How could she get into her phone? Yeah. I think, I don't know, but the, Vivica, I think, made herself look bad when she she got all wacko on there. And Kenya just stayed very classy. It was like, I did not steal your phone. <laughs> You're a trick. You're a toxic trick. And yeah, I'm she like, did lose her mind a little bit. Bring it down here a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. With your big well, fat when, five she, head. when she started to go off, I'm like, uh oh, now they're both going to get fired. Yes, <laughs> I know. Fired. I still don't know how Geraldo is still there. Me neither. He's such a twit. He is Ugh. a douche. I'm Total sorry, douche. But he's a douche. Yeah. I'm like, he couldn't be more pompous. I know. And what's up with those red glasses? <laughs> No, what was up with him Ugh. walking around shirtless, like Ew. humping iron? I'm like, that really, made me want to throw I, I saw enough up. on that that Twitter picture. I don't need to see any more. <laughs> Thank you. It's just nauseous. But he thinks everyone loves him. <laughs> but you know who loves him? Geraldo. Geraldo. That's the only person Is that loves Geraldo. Is he married? Do you know? Yes. I think a couple Ugh. times, though. So I'm sure these ladies are like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <Right? laughs> What was I thinking? Because nothing in that relationship can be about his wife, no. I'm sure. Because I'm sure he's constantly going, I was in the war. I was at the war. I reported in the war. The war, the war. That's all he ever says. It's like, Geraldo, I lost complete respect for him when he got his talk show. Because I used to like him when he was only news. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Barbara Walters, too, with The View. Mm-hmm. I liked them when they only did news, but when they started talking about themselves and whatnot there's certain things i'm like i just want to keep you in this section please don't move over to this <laughs> section you know about my, my earliest memory of geraldo it's just burned in my brain was that day that the audience member threw the chair oh, and he broke, and his, broke nose. his nose i will <laughs> never forget that i mean i was just a kid and it just it was just it's imprinted on my brain like, so anytime i'm watching celebrity apprentice i'm still thinking right? about that broken exactly nose. when you should be thinking about what a great journalist he was right, right. but no no it turned to Doesn't crappy work. tabloid yucky right. jerry springer right. who i love jerry springer for that right but if, you know but he that's his wheelhouse that's, that's his, his thing yeah. exactly right mm-hmm. <laughs> And I know you love you love fashion. Yes, I do. And all those things. You like the real housewives of <gasps> every city. <laughs> I stopped watching Atlanta though because it started too much shade. I'm like, I can't take you ladies just screaming and yelling at is, each other. Is that where what is which one is um 
is Kenya from? Kenya's from and, Atlanta. And and so is Brandy, right? Uh, no, the... Brandy is from Beverly Hills. Oh. She's the, yeah. So com- why do they have so much beef for each other, do you know? Because apparently, and this was confirmed by Andy Cohen, because I saw it come out of his own mouth on Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> um, apparently, Brandy was drunk surprise surprise and went up to <laughs> Cynthia Kenya and Nini at one of those um, big Bravo functions uh-huh. and tried to pick a fight with those ladies you don't pick a fight with Nini you don't pick a fight with any of them any of them, <laughs> any of them. so apparently that's where it started was um, she just tried to start a brawl and she's just so because she was drunk just because she well, she's always drunk and always saying stupid things and that's where it started and Kenya was like I don't have time for that oh my gosh so it's actually um, that's why, because Brandy's a trash box. <laughs> trash, trash box. box. Trash oh, box. What? She's earned no, no, no good points from you from, from celebrity friends. No, no, no. Don't Who like do you her. Hope wins. Well, I always wanted um, Ian Ziering to win, yeah. but he's not going to. But I guess now I'm going because it's only um, Geraldo and Lisa, <laughs> and I do like Lisa. I love Lisa. So she's I'm going to go really with her. Strong. I thought she was going to get voted out because she's so nice. But she's done an amazing job. Yeah, uh, fired rather, but she's done a great job. She has. Yeah. So she I has. think it's going to be. It better be Lisa. Because if so it's Geraldo, too. I'm not watching that show. Yeah, I Any, can't, I can't well, stomach if, if it is. No. Because this, his head will go from wherever it is, it'll bl- be blown up oh, by just that it'll much It'll be more. obnoxious. How weird is it seeing the episodes that have featured Joan? Oh, oh she's my like my all-time faves, too. It's so nice to see her. It was just such a, an absolute tragedy I know, what happened. I know, I know. I love seeing her, though. It would, it, and, it, and it brings up the full point that 100% she was on it, yeah. with it, in it, she was doing it. Like, mm-hmm. there's just no reason she should have passed. This yeah. Just... Did you read her book, Ma- uh, Diary of a Mad Diva? No, but I've heard amazing things. It is so, so funny. And it shows, you know, how much she did. She was here. She was there. Yeah. I mean, she flew back and forth so many times from New York to... Um, Los Angeles a zillion times Crazy. and was such a hard worker and I mean I still don't do they still know what happened I mean was it seriously botched or did, was it just an From accidental what I understand, botching horrible like, there, there are so many things that they didn't what initiated the uh, you know caused her to stop breathing I'm not sure but when she stopped breathing like no there was uh, a long amount of time that no one no one reacted no one did anything no one intubated her or anything like helped her breathing and i mean there were just what so many things that they could have done that they didn't do and they were distracted it seems like with selfies and whatever else so mm-hmm. yeah seriously something definitely went wrong that day and oh, horrible joan's gonna find the answers mm-hmm. i know she will she yes, won't she stop will. nope she doesn't have a book out yet does she uh no melissa that's what I meant. Uh, yes, Melissa, yeah, Melissa. Actually, she Melissa. just I just read today that she's got a book out that will be coming out um, in May. No, March or May. I forget. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's so I'll be, be getting that one. Yeah. That but Melissa will figure it out. But did you see? She's selling her mom's condo. One hundred fifty oh, million dollars for big fat that. penthouse, um, but I would have kept it. But there's it, probably just way too many memories there. <sighs> that could be a very mm-hmm. difficult thing. Yeah, I can I can understand that because it, it must be strange when you walk into a place when you know someone's usually there. Yeah, to always and be she there. will never mm-hmm. be back. Ugh. Horrible. It was devastating to see all the reaction from the rest of the cast. And mm-hmm. everything like that. Yeah, oh, everyone was so thing. excited to see her and everything. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has it been for you over the course of years seeing people come and go in the industry and, and around you, or having to leave, you know, former radio families to move to a different station or do how? What's that like? Um, it's you have to have a tough skin and you yeah. just kind of have to go. Well, that sucks, but that's the business that we love. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It. I mean, I've gone from station to station to station, but I've kept up with lots of people at different places. And, yeah. But when they go here, you know, that you're in the immediate thing, it's real, it's hard. And you've been now with Palm Beach Broadcasting. Since 2006. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank goodness. Don't Knock go anywhere. <laughs> I know, I know. I just love it, though. I love everybody here. What has been um, the most surprising thing about Florida for you? What have you... Surprising thing yeah. about Florida. Oh, did you know we were? As crazy I didn't know it as... gets cold. Uh, I didn't know it gets cold. Yeah. I it... thought it was gonna be, you know, hot, hot summer all the time. But I mean, most it is days. most of the time. Most I mean, you get like times. two weeks of cold. Right, right, but... right, right. <laughs> It'll wake up one morning and be freezing, and the next day you're fine. Exactly. It's so weird. But I just love Florida. I love it here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite? What kind of things do you like to do? Um, Hunter and I uh, hit the beach a lot. Mm-hmm. We do that. Um, 
probably that's our favorite thing to do is hit the beach and he you know does his skimboard and stuff i lay out mm. get a tan nice yeah i've been pale lately though so i've got to go hit the beach again <laughs> me too i'm suffering yeah that you look very pale <laughs> <laughs> my palms maybe <laughs> that's about it <laughs> Oh my gosh. So we have something else in common besides having been in a movie together. What? What? We also love Hello Kitty. <gasps> I love Hello Kitty. <laughs> um, I had my purse the other day when we were at Dirty Martini. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then you rocked out with tattoos. <laughs> and it was awesome. I just love your tattoos. What Thank else you. do you have Hello Kitty? Oh, gosh. What I don't have Hello Kitty is the, is the shorter answer. I mean, in my <laughs> storage unit, um, I, I haven't been collecting it as much lately, but... There are a good two, three years there where, I mean, I walked into the San Rio store and I, I walked out with store. bags. Mm-hmm. So, there, you know, I have in my storage unit like two boxes just full of stuff. Anything from like... Salt and pepper shakers? No! <gasps> no! We have to find those. Yes! That's the mission. I do have mission. chopsticks, though. Oh, cool. I have chopsticks. I have a, uh, a lava lamp. Um, Stop it! Now, is it pink? Yes. Is it a cat, a little kitty, head, like head floating? It, in no, it? it's it's just it's just the regular lava, but it's in glitter. Oh, that's fabulous! Yeah, it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I tell people that <laughs> okay, I preface this with saying it has never been out of the box. Oh no, I don't know if I want to know. It's a quote unquote. <laughs> sorry. I don't know if a I want to quote know. unquote personal massage. No way. <laughs> That's I not. I swear to God, <laughs> Hello Kitty makes everything. And it's officially it is a licensed. San Rio product. Hello. Okay, I need to see a picture of that later. <laughs> you need to text me a picture of that I later. Will. Next, I will. Don't... Next time when I when what? I finally manage to bring my Christmas uh, decorations mm. back to my storage <laughs> unit, I will look in that box and I will take a picture and I'll you send it to, to you. You have to find it. Say, oh look, my I swear goodness! To God. Yeah, that's hilarious. Crazy. Like there's a Hello Kitty car in Japan. There's just stuff everywhere. Mm. There's a Hello Kitty um, convention that uh, every year in LA. Oh, it needs to come oh, here to West Palm. We need to bring it here. I know. Because that'd be really fun. I know. <laughs> I'm going to the um, Shock Pop Comic Con this weekend What's that? in Fort Lauderdale, and it's basically. It's like like Elvira and oh, Freddy Krueger mm. and Wait, I um, thought he died. No. He didn't? <laughs> no, he's oh, alive I thought well. he died. <laughs> Who well. am I thinking of? I'm thinking of somebody else. Okay. Who else? I don't know. Um oh, Ralph Macchio, which Love. I'm like I wish Jason could go with me so bad. Mm-hmm. Um the uh, people from Sons of Anarchy are going to be I there. I don't watch that show, but I hear it's I haven't fab. either. My brother is obsessed. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he was really upset because, you know, they just yeah, ended. Yeah, it ended. So, yeah. But, so I'm going to go there, and it's going to be my first Comic-Con. I'm super excited. Do you dress I'm, up? I'm not dressing up this time just because I want to take it in and absorb it as much as possible, and then I'll know exactly like how to attack it next mm-hmm, year because I'm totally green I'm but I'm a comic-con virgin and I'm <laughs> unbelievably excited to go I so, love it yeah so that's what I'm doing this weekend what are you doing this weekend um I am moving <gasps> You're I'm moving. moving yes I'm moving only um about three miles okay <laughs> um my landlord decided that he wants to tear down my home oh, no. and build himself a mansion oh well then so I was like really that's nice uh, <laughs> yeah so this weekend um I get the keys to my new place and then my son and I are just gonna rent like a U-Haul yeah. to move over little stuff. Yeah. And then we got the big movers coming next week. Wow. So that's pretty much all that we're doing is kind of just, you know. So where are you going to be staying the, in the interim? Are you going to oh, be my place. the new place or the old place uh, during no, that week? No, probably my current place because yeah. that has my bed. My bed is huge. Yeah. So I need to have the mover guys take it apart and move yeah. it over there. So, yeah, we'll keep our beds there. We're just going to move, like, shelves and chairs and stuff to make the big move faster so it's cheaper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yes. It makes a difference. Mm-hmm. So I know you, you love fashion. You love um, like all those trending topics and yes. TV shows and stuff like that. I love that. gossip. What else do you really geek out about? Like if you were just to be in your PJs on a Saturday and do X, Y, Z, what would, what would that be? Um, I would probably um, watch HGTV shows yeah. all day long. Yeah. Um, well, you watch those shows, and Dave Brewster actually just did a project in his bathroom, and he was <laughs> retiling. And I said, oh, dude, I can do that. I've watched these shows all the time. Uh, uh, so he went and did it, and I said, well, did it take 30 minutes like it shows on the television show? <laughs> and he's like, no, it took all weekend, and we got to do stuff next weekend. Because oh when you gosh, see that, yeah. you think, oh, this will just take 30 minutes. Mm-mm. But Mm-mm. it's so awesome, those yard crashers and bat- 
bath crashers and yeah. living room kitchen crashers. I <laughs> love watching those shows. I could watch those all day long. Do you get creative and crafty yourself? Yes, yeah. I love doing that stuff. I've got a sewing machine. I've got um, paint. We've got Hunter and I have a big box of craft stuff. Oh, cool! Um, I love doing that stuff. I can install my own ceiling fans. I like no doing kidding. things myself. I love doing that. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's a hidden gem about you. That's yes. cool. I'm good with electrics. Are, are there things, electronics or whatever. Are there little projects you can already see yourself doing in the new place? Um, I don't know. I've got to get in there and see what I can tweak and do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very it's exciting. Cool. So as we're like kind of wrapping up, I mean, what is We're wrapping up already? I know, no. I, know. Well, I just How long has it been? About a half hour or so, and I want to, you know, make okay. sure I give you enough time to do your show prep yes. and everything. What exactly do you do for your show prep? Um, there is a site that we go to. Um, it's like a big entertainment site that it, it's all radio stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll go there. I'll go on to Perez Hilton. I go on TMZ. Um, on my Twitter, um, I follow um, all kinds. I follow you. No. I follow um, all kinds so of exciting. celebrities and stuff like that. And then, like, like me, like you, of course. <laughs> oh wait, wait! I must say though that uh, Suzanne Boyd called me a celebrity the other day. She is the so greatest, excited. isn't she? <laughs> and you so are sweet. a celebrity. You're oh, Jemmy. Oh, thank you, you are Jemmy. <laughs> um, but I always follow. You know, I'll go on my Twitter constantly when I'm on my show to see what you know. What did Pink just say? Yeah. Which is nothing lately. But I'll go on and well, she needs to open. She needs to do the halftime show at the Super Bowl. That would be. She oh, Awesome. I still want um, Weird Al Yankovic to do oh, it. Oh, heck yes! How heck fun would that be? Yes! Everybody would watch that. Are you that. kidding me? I celebrated his music from the time Forever. I was born. Forever. I love him. Yes, I was actually a dancer for Weird Al Yankovic. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I was. And it happened a hundred years ago. Oh I my was, gosh, that's <laughs> awesome. I was doing my show from Summerfest in Milwaukee. Oh my god! And he was performing at one of the stages. And one of my friends was the security guard at the station. Uh, or at the stage rather mm -hmm. and one of his dancers got sick or something and he came over he's like hey do you want to be a dancer for Weird Al Yankovic and I said um uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went over there yeah. I'll have to show you pictures later um I went over there hung out with Al for a little bit I got to rehearse with the other dancer lady I was in a humongous potato <laughs> outfit for Addicted to Spuds, this huge potato. Oh, that's awesome. I stuck my hands through the hole and I had to play a guitar. Oh my gosh. Um I was in for Smells Like Nirvana. I had to wear the little anarchy um Wait, were outfit. Were you in the video? No, not in the I was video. Say, no, no, no. Cuz I've I seen that video a million times. <laughs> no, just on his, just for that's the concert. Awesome, though. But it was an absolute blast. I had so much fun. Oh my, it was he like is that a genius. Cool, right? He's he so great. So that was really One fun. One of my favorite songs when I was a kid from him, because um, he's been around forever, was because um, <laughs> I'm a little morbid. I, I, I call, it was called Nature <laughs> Nature Trail to Hell. Oh, I don't no, know that one. He had, you know, some, most of his songs are parodies, but then he right. has originals. I think this one was an original, and it was a uh, went Nature Trail to Hell in 3D, oh and it's about a movie about like a bunch of like campers, like uh, Boy Scouts or something mm -hmm. like that, and they go into the woods and they basically get all killed. And oh my but it was, gosh, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. And then, um, you know, a couple a couple decades later, he came out with this one song called, um, I think it was called Talk Soup was oh, the name okay. of the song, but it was about, uh -huh. like, the, the show, right. you know? And it was talking about how, um, um, it, 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 like, people who come on and just are crazy and they don't care and they just let everybody love They're like, <laughs> I'm a... Um, I'm a I'm an albino, you know, ninja dancer <laughs> who, you know, has no chin or something like that. It's just like the most random stuff. It is hilarious. Oh my so gosh! You need to find that. I song. will. I will it's find so that one. Good. I can't believe you oh used to dance a weird app. Yeah. Well, only one time. Just at That's that one amazing, concert. It was though. awesome. It was so cool. Did you get to like meet him and talk to yes, him? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's he like? Super awesome. Super cool. Very reserved. Oh, very no reserved. kidding. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he had so the big, I've got to find those pictures. There's somewhere. There's probably on my Facebook yeah. page somewhere. That's so funny because mm -hmm. it sometimes it, it surprises me sometimes when people have such amazing and huge personalities mm -hmm. when they're performing. Right. And then they're just so, like like that's probably how like I think. 
people have said that's how Michael Jackson was, like, he, you know, just totally reserved mm-hmm. and, and when he's not on stage, very shy. And so for you to say that Weird Al was, like, reserved, it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Because he's huge. There's a, um, my son is obsessed with this one show on Nick Jr. called Yo Gabba Gabba. Okay. And he, and it has all kinds of, every episode, there's a new, like, guest person, almost like SNL kind of, but they, oh, they do cool. something. And this one episode, like, Jack Black's been on, and but, but Weird Al was on it. And he was <gasps> really? in the whole episode. And he basically like started a circus, and so he has this top hat and everything, and it was just so fun. That's I'm fun. like, I'm like, I'm looking at my kid, and he's loving the show. I'm like, you have no idea how awesome <laughs> this is that you're watching this right now. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, I'm gonna have to look that up on oh, YouTube. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's so neat. So neat. So <laughs> totally well, cool. Oh well, thank you so much for, for you're sitting welcome. with me. This and... was so fun. I want to do it again. Oh, we're definitely gonna do okay. it again. I love Absolutely. It. We can amazing. do that on location sometime. We'll have to go great. out and do it on location. That would be great. I actually did one, an impromptu one on location um, with, I'll just say, with one member of the KVJ show who... um, Was it the girl? I won't say (laughs) say anything else. Because that would be obvious. All I'll say is they (laughs) really uh, opened up. Oh, really? (laughs) We're waiting to be Jason. I'm waiting to see if I can even put that out there. (laughs) Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, they really opened up. (gasps) So, yeah, so I do, I think when you go, when you're out there sometimes, it just, it's a different... A little bit of a different atmosphere. Feel, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll do it sometime. That could definitely. Be. Okay, good. So thank I you. I love so, it. Do you want to sign off the podcast? Sure. How do I do that? Okay. All you do is say, "I okay. am Tracy St. George, and this has been Curve the Cube." Okay. All right, Jemmy. Here I go. <laughs> I'm Tracy St. George, and this has been Curve the Cube. Yay! Right, Yay! Woo! Love it. And we're out. <laughs> Perfect. You are awesome. That was so much fun. You have successfully curved the cube.